All right, so Hardware 3 Retrofit Update 1. I just got to the Tesla Service Center. Uh, I was informed on the app that it would take around an hour, maybe longer, to do the service. Um, and I got here really early too, but they tell me it's actually going to take um, <laughs> end of day tomorrow latest. So they gave me a bunch of Uber credits. So uh, we'll have to say goodbye for the time being. And um, hopefully everything will be fine. I'll be able to come pick up my car. They say even when it's closed, the lot is open. So I'll be able to just grab the car and drive away, I, I hope. And uh, hopefully with hardware three and uh, functioning full FSD. All right, so update number one. It is currently the next day around 3.15. The car is still not ready. I didn't see any activity on the app that tracks the repair progress until around 5.30 yesterday, and the place closes at 6. So when I saw that, I was thinking there's probably no chance it's going to be done last night, which it wasn't. I could see my door and frunk being open on the app, and that was about the only thing I could do to actually track anything actually going on with the progress. Then today, when I looked at the app, it says mobile access disabled. So I guess I can't even see if something is open or not. And for the longest time, there weren't any updates at all today until maybe around an hour ago, I looked and it says 12 volt battery replacement on screen. So I'm not intimately familiar with the MCU or not MCU, but with the um, full self-driving computer hardware three upgrade, but I don't think it should require a replacement of the low voltage battery, but that seems to be what's happening. Hopefully they're not going to charge me for that. So I don't know what's going on with that. And they're only going to be open for another three hours today. So if I don't hear anything soon, I'm probably going to call them in about an hour to see what's going on with this. Um, I'm definitely a bit anxious because last night I also checked, uh, which I should have done before taking the car in, but I looked at some reviews for this is the Syosset Long Island Tesla Service Center and the reviews are terrible. There are tons of horror stories of things that have happened to people there. So, I mean, although it sucks being without my car, I'm just worried about getting it back in, in the same condition I, I brought it to them because I didn't, I didn't take like a video of the car besides for that brief image of it that you saw in, in the last clip. I didn't take a video of the car before I, I dropped it off there. So if there are some damages there, they can, they, I have no proof that it's their fault, um, which is very worrying to me. I, I'm going to be doing a, an even more thorough inspection of the car when I get it back than I did when I actually first took delivery of it. So yeah, this is becoming pretty scary and um, we'll, we'll keep you posted. We'll see what's going on. Okay, here we are around an hour later. It's around 4.15 right now. I was seeing that the 12 volt battery thing was showing a, a charge of over $200 that was an outdated invoice. So it wasn't like charged yet, but I wasn't sure it was gonna ha be happening with that. I messaged their service chat right in the app, which surprisingly I got pretty frequent res responses from. Um, the person said this was not typical of a full self-driving computer hardware three retrofit. And I asked them, why might this be happening? Maybe somebody damaged the battery or something. Cause my, I just got the car a week ago, granted it was used, but I haven't seen anything about problems with the 12 volt battery. So then eventually the, the person replied and saying, it said, disregard that line. You will not be charged out of pocket for this, uh, this thing. So, okay, good. So now finally, the car is, the repair is supposedly done. I can go pick it up. Where it shows the details on, weirdly not even on the battery section, but on the full self-driving computer issue, it lists rodent's nest found in front of car, ground wire for the battery chewed through. I have never heard of anything so ridiculous. Uh, for one thing, when I got the car, it came from Arizona. Do they have rats in Arizona? When I open the frunk, the frunk area, just everything about the car is in like amazing condition and like super clean. Like I don't, I don't see, I saw no signs of, of like it didn't really look like anyone even had ever opened the frunk. Um, of course, I guess this is to talking more about the internals, but still. Then for my, I've only had the car about a week and I keep it in a garage in, in great condition. There, I'm pretty sure somebody in the repair, doing the repair, damaged the battery and then just came up with this as an excuse. I, I find it really, really hard to believe that there was some kind of 
I wouldn't, like, how, how do you even, I, I'm shocked, but they're not charging me for anything. So now what we have to do is cross our fingers. I need, I need your energy as well, even though by the time you're watching this, it, it'll already have been over, but uh, I need, I need your energy as well. Give me your spirit bomb to hopefully receive this vehicle in, in perfect condition and not in any, nothing damaged. I'm, you know, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily have my hopes up after all the things I've been reading of these reviews of the Syosset Tesla place, but, um, for, for me, it's going to be a little while before I find out, but for you guys, you'll find out right now. Silver Fox, I found you. All right, so I'm back in the Silver Fox. From preliminary inspection, I don't see any kind of damage to the interior. I still have to check to make sure the things that I left with it are still here. My SSD is still here. I didn't check the trunk yet for my mobile connector. I assume that would still be there. Um, FSD is definitely installed. Uh, or the FSD computer, I should say. My profile and all my settings are gone, which is not what was supposed to happen. But considering the potential things that could have been much worse than that, I'm not really that concerned. I just got to go reset everything the way I want it to. I'm going to do a more thorough inspection when I get home, because right now this place is closed and I'm just in this dark parking lot and uh, it's kind of spooky. So hopefully everything will be okay. We'll uh, have another update soon. All right, it's the next day. I'm back in the Silver Fox. Everything is pretty much okay. I definitely have Harbor 3. I've looked around. There are some fingerprints on the Franc because they, they went through that. Um, some fingerprints in some other places. They didn't really clean anything up. That is not a big deal compared to what I've seen other people experience in some of the reviews of this Syosa Tesla Service Center that I saw. So not going to complain about it much. Other things, I mentioned in the last clip that my settings, my driver profile and all that were erased, which is true. I did realize when actually remaking my settings that there's a way to link them to my account. And I'm not sure if I had done that, uh, if, if I had done that prior, would I have been able to then bring them back? But either way, they were supposed to back up the settings into the card to the new chip or to the new system, which they didn't. So that wasn't great. Um, nothing was missing. I did have a few things in the car that, uh, after reading how, how bad the place is to other people, I've kind of felt nervous about, but fortunately nothing was taken out. They also didn't charge it. So that is an expense that came from me that really shouldn't have. Uh, I went in with around 72% battery and I got it back around 55% battery. Again, I'm not going to complain about that. Whatever, you know, they didn't charge me for the service. Um, the stuff with the, the rodent damage, I was thinking about it more and, you know, I guess it's possible that something did happen, but the reason why I still think it's bullshit and that they just made it up uh, when, it, when it was their error, one, my car didn't give me any warnings or any telling me anything about needing a low voltage battery replacement. This specific flag or whatever you want to call it that they had on the app said, 12 volt battery replacement on screen. I'm pretty sure that that means on the, the screen of the car, on the touch screen, it was telling them something. So why would they suddenly get that warning when they have the car and they're working on it when I didn't get that in all the time that I've had it? Well, I mean, I haven't had it long, but is it just gonna suddenly appear? I don't think so. Another reason why I don't think that they're telling the truth about that and everything is if it was some kind of, you know, rodent, damage something chewed in a wire and everything well that wouldn't be their fault so if the if the thing came up on the screen and it's not there now because i don't have that warning anymore that means they did something to get rid of it right maybe they actually replaced the battery i don't even know how i would tell that so why wouldn't they pin that on me and charge me for it if it was something that happened before i brought the car to them you know what i'm saying so i I think they just messed something up and then used that as a, a way to cover themselves, but still didn't charge me for it. I don't know, and I'll probably never know, but I didn't get charged for it, so that's good. My overall experience with this, this was my first Tesla service center visit. Uh, I wish I had checked the reviews of the place before going because there's just too many negative reviews for me to really trust a place like that. Um, I, overall, I would say it was a so-so experience. When I, I had the appointment made for quite a while, and the app describing the service told me that it would take an hour maybe slightly longer when i got to the place as i mentioned they told me 
it was going to be end of day or the next day at the latest. And it wound up being the next day, end of day that I got it. So way longer than I thought. Um, and they gave me Uber credits, but they only give you a hundred dollars a day. And that was barely enough for what I need. Fortunately, I didn't have to do a lot of driving, but just, um, with my basic needs, cause the, the service center is not that close to me. So that was already, you know, cutting it close. Hopefully I would have been able to get more if I needed it, but regardless, and then just the general experience, getting it back, not having it charged some fingerprints, not like they cleaned off after they did their work and my profile being erased, all things that really didn't have to happen and, and shouldn't ha have happened, but they did do the service and now I'm just waiting for my, uh, my beta to get approved, to get into beta and we'll have content coming out about that. All right. So let me know what experiences you guys have had with Tesla service, hopefully better experiences than mine, hopefully not worse. And I would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a sub to Silver Fox Tesla and stay tuned for more Tesla content coming your way.